I practice medicine at a center that specializes in the treatment of obesity. The people who come to see us have all struggled with excess weight for a long time. And many of them have severe health problems. They have diabetes, they have heart disease, they have bone and joint problems. And that's different from one to the next. But there's one thing that all of our patients have in common. And that is that they've all lost weight before. Not once, not twice. Over and over again. Because every time they lose weight, the weight just comes back. And it doesn't matter how hard they struggle. It doesn't matter what diet they go on. It doesn't matter what exercise program they follow. It doesn't matter whether they lose the weight fast or slow. The weight always comes back. And so by the time that I get to see them, they feel like they're the biggest losers. And they ask me, Dr. Sharma, there must be something wrong with me. There must be something wrong with my metabolism. Every time I lose weight, it comes back. Now I know that my patients are not alone with this problem. Let me ask you, is there anybody here who's ever lost weight? Come on, be honest. Yeah. Does anybody put it back on again? Yeah. It's almost everybody. Because we know that out of 20 people who go out and lose weight, and it doesn't matter how they do it, 19 are going to put the weight back on. And so the question is, why is this so difficult? You know, why is losing weight one thing, but keeping it off is where the real struggle is? Now we understand that there's a complex neurobiology that regulates our body weight. And we understand that this complex neurobiology also defends us against weight loss. And it's complex. You know, this is not calories in, calories out. That's, that's physics. You know, I'm talking physiology. And the way that I think about physiology is it's your biology messing with physics. And so for a long time, I was looking for a way, how do I explain this to my patients? How do I get my patients to understand what they're really up against every time they go out and try and lose weight? And that's what I want to show you today. I want to show you what it actually takes to lose 50 pounds and keep them off. And to help me with this demonstration, I'd like to welcome Alex here to the stage. And she just volunteered uh, before my talk. She doesn't know what's awaiting her. <laughs> Give her a warm welcome here. Thank you, Alex. Step forward. All right, so Alex, here's what I want you to do. <laughs> I want you to take this one end of this band and the other end so that you can hold it like this, OK? All right, why don't you just do that? Yeah, that's good. OK. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit optimistic. OK. <laughs> one more. All right, fine. And now I want you to hold it like this, OK? All right, good. So what I want you to picture is this is this is Alex's weight, and it's 250 pounds. And I have no idea how Alex got to be 250 pounds. This could be genetics. Maybe she's an emotional leader. Maybe she has a stressful job. Maybe it's not enough sleep because she works shifts. Maybe, and I hope not, it's PTSD, depression. Maybe Alex is on medications that make her hungry all the time. It doesn't matter. Because anybody who's put on weight is going to be up exactly the same problem that Alex is up against. So Alex, you ready to lose 50 pounds? Yeah. All right, great. So I'm sure that out there, you're going to have a couple of suggestions for her. What are the things that she could possibly do to try to get some of that weight off? Exercise. Exercise. How much exercise do you think? She, what's your recommendation? 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes a day. You can do 30 minutes a day? Yeah. All right. So she's going to start doing 30 minutes of exercise a day. And guess what? She's starting to get thinner here. What else? Eat Pardon me? Eat healthy. Eat healthy. OK. Maybe cut her calories a little bit, right? Maybe f cut her calories by 500. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's working. What else could she do? Get better sleep. Get better sleep. Yep. We learn a lot about sleep. See? She's getting skinny. <laughs> right there. She's losing weight in front of our eyes. And I, you know what? I look at that. I say, you know, that's maybe 50 pounds. Great. So what does Alex now have to do to keep the weight off? 
No, she just needs to keep pulling on the rubber band. That's all. Okay, so you just keep pulling, and that's how you're going to keep the weight off. Because here's the thing. See, see, I don't know how she got to 250 pounds. It doesn't matter. But she's up against the same challenge that anybody is up against who's put on weight and is going to try to lose it. Because what you're seeing here, that tension in that rubber band, that's her body trying to get the weight back. And the body's got lots of tricks. That neurophysiology we talked about, it's increasing her appetite. It's slowing her metabolism. And in fact, even her muscles gets more fuel efficient. So she can, now that she's lost the weight, she can do the same amount of exercise, but burn fewer calories. And so the tension you see, that's just her body wanting the calories, wanting the body weight back. And she's going to have to keep pulling on that. And she's doing a great job. We're just going to let her stand there and keep pulling. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you see, that's the problem. The problem is, right now, there's about a billion people in this world, men, women, children, living with obesity. And we don't have a cure. Now, I wish that we, we even had some way to prevent this from happening in the first place. But if you if get the prevention going, that's still not going to help the people who have the problem. And all the people who have the problem, you know, they're going to try to lose weight, going to diet, they're going to exercise. And most of them are going to put the weight back on. Alex, how are you doing? Great. <laughs> so I know this is depressing. <laughs> yeah, you guys are getting depressed. You know, my patients get very depressed when I tell them this, and I'm very depressed. But when I look at this, you know, I, you know, I just see another chronic disease. Now, I look at my patients with diabetes. You know, they come in. She's putting some of that weight back on already. <laughs> you know, my patients with diabetes come in. You know, we start them off on diet. We do their exercise. They take their medication. You know, check their blood sugars come in for regular checkups, and guess what? The blood sugar levels go down, and the risk for, diabetes, for, for heart disease and all the complications goes down. It's great. But guess what happens when they come off their diet? Guess what happens when they stop their exercise, or they stop their medication, or they stop coming in for visits? Blood sugar goes back up. All the problems come back. I look at my patients with high blood pressure. It's the same story. You know, they come in, they start their low-salt diet, they start their exercise program, they take their medications, they check their blood pressure levels, they come in for regular visits, we bring the blood pressure down, great. Reduces their risk for heart attacks and strokes. Now guess what happens when they stop exercising, when they come off their diet, they come off their medications, guess what? Risk goes back up. That's chronic disease. Every chronic disease, you stop the treatment, that's what happens. The disease comes back. And obesity, you stop the diet, you stop the exercise, you stop taking your medications, you get your bariatric surgery undone, guess what? Weight's coming back. And that is exactly why the Canadian Medical Association, the American Medical Association, they've all now come up and said, you know, once you have obesity, you've got to look at it as a chronic disease because it behaves like a chronic disease. It's not about shame or blame. It's about accepting the fact that the problem you're up against is like the same problem that anybody's up against who has a chronic disease. And so what I tell my patients, and what I want to tell you today, if you yourself or someone you care about has obesity, tell them to get professional help. Tell them to get help from a doctor, from a nurse, from a dietitian, from anybody who's trained as a health professional to manage chronic disease. Because the principles of chronic disease management, they are well known. They're established. Patient education, self-management, regular monitoring, regular checkups, coming up with a realistic treatment plan that you can actually stay on. And we do that for patients who have diabetes. We do that for people living with heart disease. We do that for people living with high blood pressure. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what we need to be doing for people living with obesity. Thank you so much, and give her a big hand. Thank you.